Hello, my name is Hobie Wedler, and I'm so happy to be able to talk to you today. Just to give you a little bit of background about myself, I recently graduated with my PhD in Computational Organic Chemistry from the University of California, Davis. I am totally blind myself. And today, I'm here to talk to you about science and about how blind people can do science just as well as sighted people. It's very often that people talk about science and scientific topics as being very visual and things that are hard to study when you can't see. And that, although may be true as a stereotype, is not true in reality. The truth is that we can do science just as well as sighted people. We just need slightly different tools in order to do so. I'll give you a good example. I teach chemistry camps annually for blind high school and early college students. And the students that we teach are mostly people who have struggled to understand that they can do science themselves. But they are people who love science and who believe that with a little bit of motivation they can do science. We bring them into these chemistry camps and we show them using blind mentors and blind instructors that science is doable. And we do this through slightly adapted experimental procedures. Our students do titrations, just like any sighted student would do in their general or organic chemistry lab. But most sighted students use indicators that change color when something called pH, which is basically how acidic a solution or basic a solution is, indicators that change color when that pH changes dramatically. We use indicators that change smell. Did you know that onion and garlic, when they are placed in a basic solution, which is a solution of sodium hydroxide, actually become odorless? Then when acid is added back to the solution to make it neutral again, the onion and garlic aroma comes back. This is really impressive and we can use it in the chemistry lab to make something like a titration fully accessible to blind and visually impaired students. We also use our sense of smell to determine when ester syntheses have been completed. The reason I share these examples with you is just to show you that we can do science just the same way as sighted people, but we use slightly different techniques. When I'm working in the laboratory by myself or with an assistant, I set up the equipment myself and everything that I can do safely, I perform on my own. When measuring liquids, I stick my finger in a glove and then stick my finger down into the beaker or whatever device I'm measuring in and feel how high the liquid is on my finger and against the edge of the beaker rather than looking at the level using vision. My point is that there are techniques that we can use and small adaptations that we can make to make science just as exciting and just as accessible to us. In the story that you read, the young lady measures the length of her dog using techniques that are accessible to her. She's making adaptations for her science project at home, just like I've made to make chemistry accessible to me. I use three-dimensional printing to print chemical structures and feel them so that I can further understand my results from my computational calculations. This is a use of 3D printing that we developed that we never imagined would, could be used to make chemistry accessible, but after some development and some thinking and a little bit of creativity, my work that I do in the chemistry lab is just as accessible to me as it is to my sighted peers with minimal sighted assistance. I also have a tremendous hobby for cooking. Just recently, my spouse and I got a big green egg, which is a ceramic cooker that gets up to temperatures in excess of a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Can I use this cooking instrument myself? Absolutely. I just have to figure out where things are before I start cooking, and I can use it just the same by feel as my spouse can by looking at it. Have fun. Explore. 
embrace the fact that you can adapt science to make it accessible to you. And most importantly, know that you can do anything you want to do and your mere lack of eyesight should not hold you back from pursuing your dreams. I'm always available to chat and I would love to be in touch with any of you if you have any questions for me. Thank you and happy science.